Joining us now on the phone, Dana Perino, former White House press secretary under George W. Bush and co-host of The Five here on Fox News Channel. Uh, Dana, when, when people hear about this palace intrigue, you know, uh, chairs being shuffled around uh, in, in the Oval Office, they, they might not think it affects them, and maybe it doesn't. What, in your view, does the departure, the departure of Steve Bannon mean to this administration? I think a couple of things, John. First, I do think that it is true for a company as it is for the government that personnel is policy, and so the team is very important, and who you have there is important. I think that um, this is a continuation of General John Kelly helping the president refocus the White House team, and I'm going to give you three D words. Steve Bannon had become a distraction because he was getting a lot more attention even than the president. You saw that even at the president's frustration with um, that book that Joshua Green of Bloomberg wrote. There was also reportedly distrust amongst the White House staff when it came to leaks and the belief that Steve Bannon was leaking about them and their colleagues, their friends. And third, I would say destruction. Steve Bannon had reportedly said he did not plan to be at the White House for longer than 8 to 12 months. Well, you know, it's August. It's the eighth month of the presidency, and he hit his deadline. But I also think that when it comes to destruction, when he called the Robert Kuttner, the reporter of the American Prospect the other day, and just laid it all out there and really basically undermined President Trump on his North Korea policy, I think that was probably the final straw for the president. And for his chief of staff, General John Kelly, who is a military man uh, after all, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. for, for him to read those words from Steve Bannon that essentially there is no military solution to the North Korean problem. That's what Bannon had to say. And for General Kelly, um, well, that, that's not acceptable. Well, and, it, and also because if you're the president, you had just told North Korea that you will fight with fire and fury. And that was a successful move because North Korea backed down. They did not shoot missiles at Guam this week. And you also got China from a diplomatic standpoint to push back against North Korea. So I think that this is just a resettling of the White House. I've never seen um, this much change within a personnel in the White House. But I think that this is probably going to be good especially for the staff. And apparently, Steve Bannon says he's prepared to help the president with his agenda when he's outside of the White House as well. Um, we'll see if that's helpful or hurtful. I don't know if this week the, that Bannon's advice was helpful to the president in dealing with the aftermath of Charlottesville, but time will tell. That's what I was actually going to ask you, Dana. Um, do you think that this is also an effort to distance the administration from the you know, alt-right nationalists because, of course, Steve Bannon was connected to that? Well, so, yes, um, when Bannon was head of Breitbart, he said that he is, was providing a platform for the alt-right. And I had said on the five, I think that the president would not pay a political price if he distanced himself from the alt-right. And in some ways, symbolically, yes, that's look, it could be the case. But I actually think that the firing, whether it was a firing or a resignation, is still in question. The New York Times is reporting that Steve Bannon uh, submitted his resignation on August 7th. And the president had waited to decide what he was going to do. He doesn't like conflict in his inner circle. And I do think that he appreciates some of the work that Steve Bannon had done to help get him to the presidency. But he wants to be the main event. Um, and regardless of what an advisor can tell a president to do, the president himself or herself in the future, they are the ones responsible for what they say. So mm -hmm. I don't know if this will help in the future uh, in regards to dealing with crises of like the one that we saw in this past week, but certainly for the country, I hope so. Let me read a quote from an Associated Press uh, piece written apparently by Carolyn Castor. She writes, one White House source twists the knife. His, meaning Bannon's departure, may seem turbulent in the media, but inside it will be very smooth. He has no projects or responsibilities to hand off. That's a way of <laughs> yeah, saying that's that... Yeah, that's a sick burn right yeah, there. That's what yeah. they call that, John. <laughs> that's, that's somebody who's... <laughs> In the Oval it means Office. That you are, Ouch. It means you are so irrelevant to the operation that it doesn't matter if you leave. But please go. You are a distraction. We don't trust you. And you have been destructive to the White House and to the party. And so it will be better if you're not here. At this point in time, when so many Republican senators and members of Congress are so critical of the president for his handling of the Charlottesville incident, um, does the departure of Steve Bannon hold out hope that, that maybe there will be a, a little less rancor within the Republican Party? 
Well, that's a curious thing, John, because actually during the health care debate, as I understood it, um, Steve Bannon was actually trying to be pretty helpful. Um, when it didn't pass initially in the House, there was some grumbling that um, Steve Bannon had said, you are obligated to um, vote with this president and his agenda, and some members of Congress took umbrage at that. But yet, it, when it moved on and it finally passed the House and then it was getting through the Senate, of course, that ultimately failed, but apparently a lot of members of Congress felt like they could actually get a phone call return from Steve Bannon, and he was somebody that uh, you could work with. So mm -hmm. I don't know if members of Congress will think that it will be easier or harder to work with the White House now without Steve Bannon, but I don't think he was entirely unhelpful to this president. I think that he did some good work for him if you're looking at it from President Trump's point of view. Uh, Dana, there's some information that has just uh, come our way from Doug McElway. Apparently there, and this is in, not entirely unexpected, uh, 19 different conservative groups are protesting the removal of Bannon and then possibly uh, Kellyanne Conway as well. Do you think that she's next? Oh, goodness. I, I, um, I certainly have not heard that at all. And in fact, she was um, utilized today very effectively by the White House to um, give some context and information for reporters this morning. So I certainly haven't heard that about Kellyanne Conway. And I think one of the things that Steve Bannon wanted to do is he just, he could not stand the establishment. And he exposed the establishment for what he thought it was. And he helped drive division within the Republican Party, maybe division that was going to be inevitable, but he drove it through. Um, you know, you hear that there's possibly other people out at the White House. Politico is reporting that the head of public liaison is going to be out. This, again, could just be the resettling after General John Kelly took over as chief of staff, or it could mean that there are more departures to come because of concerns of leaks or whatever. Um, but I certainly haven't heard that about Kellyanne Conway and, and wouldn't believe that. Hmm. We just saw Until a... Until you call me back in two hours. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we just saw a, um, an acting uh, communications director appointed, Hope Hicks, took the job yes. at the ripe old age of 28. Now, you know, if, if you're Steve Bannon and you're calling up uh, American prospect and, and railing about the things he railed about, North Korea and the alt-right and so forth, is that the kind of thing that a communications director wants to rein in? I mean, I guess what I'm asking is, you know, if there had been a, a, an established person in that position, would Bannon have felt free to pick up the phone? Possibly not, but I think the person who most would want uh, Steve Bannon not to make that phone call is the President of the United States. Right. So that was really the egregious part. Um, I think that Hope Hicks could do a really good job. I mean, she obviously has the ear of the President. I understand she has a motto of let Trump be Trump, which could be good or could mm -hmm. lead to more uh, stories like the ones we've had this week. Um, that job is so important. One of the most important things you have to be is an honest broker for everybody at the White House because everyone will have a different point of view for a policy or how it should be communicated, and you have to be the one that makes a final decision. And it's a lot of long-range planning. It's not day-to-day -day press work. That's actually the job of Sarah Huckabee Sanders. Well, and speaking of the press secretary, we do have one official statement right now. It just came in from the White House, and it says, White House Chief of Staff John Kelly and Steve Bannon have mutually agreed today would be Steve's last day. We're grateful for his service and wish him the best. Hmm. Short little statement there, Short but says a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Short and sweet, or not so sweet, depending on who you are.